Hey everyone, my name is Tikito and welcome to episode number 3 of Grip Muscle Spotlight. And today we are going to talk about the remaining 3 muscles of the hand and their function and so on. So stay tuned for this episode and thanks for watching. Today's episode will be about three muscles and the first one is the extensor carpi radialis longus and it goes on the radial side of your forearm. You can remember this by the radius bone always being on the side of your thumb. So the movement that this muscle does is called radial deviation, like this. Deviates your hand upwards. The next one is called really similarly it's the extensor carpi radialis brevis and it does this movement like an extension of your wrist and the last one is the extensor carpi ulnaris the ulnaris bone being on the lower part of your forearm and it does ulnar deviation those are the basic function of these three muscles and let's have a close look at their anatomy Let's start with the extensor carpi radialis longus and as you can see it's not very good visibly from the front so let's switch to the sides and as you can see it's on the radial side on the side of my radius bone and to find this muscle on your body you can have your arm like this and as you maybe remember from the last video on the lateral on the outer part of your elbow uh, which is around here you can go upwards, and upwards meaning upwards on my arm, and then you will find the spot where the muscle starts. And if you hold it like this and then do radial deviation, you should feel it in your finger, the, where it starts. Now, the muscle goes up your forearm, and about the last third part of it, it forms a tendon that goes all the way up here and inserts into your hand and into your wrist and the index finger, the metacarpal bone of the index finger around here, there it inserts. And as you can imagine, if there's a pull from this strong muscle here, it pulls your wrist into the radial deviation. Sounds logical, doesn't it? <laughs> The next muscle we're going to talk about is really close to the other one I draw in red. It's the extensor carpi radialis brevis and as you can see it starts close to the longus but instead it starts directly on the lateral elbow and it accompanies it on the side, it's a little bit below it and the tendons go together. But now there's a main difference the brevis inserts into the metacarpal bone of your third finger, your middle finger, and thus if there's a pull down here from your elbow, it doesn't only do a radial deviation, it also does a wrist extension like this. Okay, So the brevis is important for extending your wrist. The last one of the muscles is the extensor carpi ulnaris, and you might have thought it might come from the medial side of our elbow now, but it doesn't, right? It also comes from the lateral part of our elbow, but then it switches the sides and goes all the way down here to our wrist on the opposite side of the other two. And now it inserts into the metacarpal bone of your fifth finger, which is the small one, and as you can imagine, if you pull up here, it does this movement. It's ulnar deviation. So those are the three muscles. I hope you learned something. Now let's go to the next chapter. Ulna and radial deviation is used when drinking, for example milk like I do in this video. It is also used when hanging and swinging to stabilize your hand and your wrists. It's also used for woodcutting and gardening work in general like shoveling stuff or cutting wood. It is a really good workout, by the way. And as you might know, you also use it for sword fighting. You use a lot of radial deviation and ulnar deviation for hand balancing as well. But you might not do it every day. 
Or you might. I don't know. The way to train your hand extension is by piling a few books up on the table and then you take a dumbbell and place your arm on it like this and then you do just the isolated extension of your wrist. Now if that's too easy for you, you can increase the weight of the dumbbell or you can make the grip thicker, for example with a fat grip like I have here, put it around and now this is much harder. Okay, that's one example. A good way to train your wrist extension is by carrying many grocery bags. So if you have heard of farmer's walks, you can do farmer walks because if you have one side and met lots of bags and they move back and forth, you can imagine by stabilizing and holding them, there's a lot of work put into the wrist extension and into the flexion as well. So if you have never done them, try them and the next time you pick up groceries, put them all in a bag and see it as a free workout. So have fun with these exercises. If you have parallels, you can use them for your main workout and they're an excellent way to train radial and ulnar deviation while doing your main workout. Because as you can imagine, both um, these movements are trained when you do exercises on the parallels. And let me show you an example. If I just go into the L sit, as you might have seen, both sides of the wrist have to do heavy work, which is really good for developing this muscle. If you don't have parallels but you have a pull-up bar, you could do a neutral grip pull-up, which will also give you a good workout for your wrists and your radial and ulnar deviation. So I'll just do an example here. Um, you go into a neutral grip, go down, and then you just pull yourself up and repeat four reps as you see fit. For the older and radial deviation, please see my other video for sword fighting where I am showing some exercises that are really good for developing ulnar and radial deviation. Stretch to stretch all of these three muscles is by extending your arm completely, lock out your elbow, and then you grab around the upper part, this is really important, of your hand, like this, with your other hand, like so. And then you move this slightly into the direction of your body, but go slow. You don't want to hurt yourself. This is a really intense stretch, and you can hold this for up to 30 seconds. You can see I'm squeezing the hand together while doing the stretch, and then stretching this. This feels really good after hard workout. This was Grip Muscle Spotlight number three. Today's episode is over. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll make sure to make the next video soon, within the next one or two weeks. And I hope to see you back. And thanks for watching.